Okay, so everybody just saw a little bit of film and video of some of the actual chart recorder rolls uh, from Landers. Um, quite a lot of data, you know, years and years worth of uh, uh, earthquake data. Um, now, right here on the wall, we have a chart, and this is basically what you hand plotted, uh, hand plotted data over an entire year. This is one year of uh, the information in the station log as regard to the magnitudes or amplitudes or whatever mm -hmm. was graphically uh, put into a long-term basis. Uh, that information was broadcast daily out of the, uh, the transmitter there at Landers so that I could receive it at other locations and other people could too. On amateur radio band, uh, the signal carried all the way to Japan. So right. it was... Uh, was pretty uh, pretty widespread. Everyone could get this information that knew about it and had a way to copy Morse code. So I took uh, one year's worth of data and plotted it to see what it looked like in the time domain. And a lot of uh, very revealing things presented themselves. So h how many different pieces of data are you putting so, together? So what we like... have is, this is what's, what's going here. So this is what's called the solar flux. Okay, that's the red one on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. This is the um, basically the radi radiative output of the sun. It's measured at uh, 2,800 megacycles, and it's in uh, watts per square centimeter. So basically, it's it's kind of the radio power output of the sun, and it's termed the solar flux. Okay. Uh, the one on the top here, this is the daily number over a 24-hour period, so each day there's a different point. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the total number of uh, vibrational, significant vibrational impulses that are picked up out of the Earth, so that's a vibration count. Like, fi like physical, mechanical physical, stress? Physical, mechanical jumping of the Earth. So okay. in other words, if the Earth starts to vibrate, the counter starts to count those vibrations, Okay. and then that number is recorded at the uh, at the start of the next day, the counters reset, and okay. so that produces every day there's a number of vibrations, and because it's such a, a, a widespread variation, this is, is on a logarithmic basis. So anytime you double the amplitude, you're going up 10 times. So if you have four times, then it's 100, and if you go, so if you see what I mean. Kind of like so Richter scale Richter style. Scale. Yeah, right. otherwise it wouldn't want to stay on the paper. Right. Because one day the counter might read 350, and the next day it might read 7,500, or the one other day it might read 150,000. So you have to have a logarithmic. So this is ground vibration. Uh, these are this is the telluric uh, Earth antenna system. The beverage antenna is in red. That's the electrical activity. The above ground. Above antenna. ground. Uh, uh -huh. It's weighted by a set of analog networks to respond best to uh, crashing static noises and impulses and signals that are not coherent, which would be produced by lightning, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, and other sources of electrical interference, solar noise, which constitutes the, uh, the general interference to the system. The green one is the telluric underground antenna. So what these are, these are peak signal amplitudes for one day. So I will read the highest number on the chart for that day, and then that goes in the log. So if the chart recorder is at a certain level and that recording interval in the morning, and then you go back and through the 24 hours and you find the highest spot on the chart for that day, then that is the number that's selected for that. And that's the green line. The green uh, and the red lines okay. do both that. So now, the, now with the telluric thing, the, the uh, waiting networks are the opposite. It's looking for a musical sound. Okay. It's designed to reject crashing noises, static impulses, and sparking sounds, or any of that type of stuff. It's looking for that particular musical signal that occurs before an earthquake. So that way, then you get uh, uh, what it is and what it ain't, so to speak, uh, comparison. Right. Uh, which is basically the Alexanderson way of uh, what he called his barrage receiver, where is you deliberately had one system pick up all the interference and noise so that, what do you want to? Yeah, go over here a little bit. Okay, so that you can reject that. So that's uh, because ultimately the surface of the earth is going to refract the exterior signals inward and the interior signals outwards.